It's going from bad to worse, literally. It couldn't be getting much worse than this. Midway through answering that question, the whole stream just <laughs> crashed. Blue screen, computer gone, dead. It'll probably happen again, but let's hope not. So I was midway through answering a question about my printer. This hot end mount. So it's one that I downloaded from Thingiverse. And I can't remember the link, so I feel a little bit bad about that. Let's see if I can find uh, what it was. But it's the idea was basically to have an original Prusa sort of mount, but modified to be Bowden. Bowden, however you like to pronounce it. So that's what I've tried to go for. The let's see if I can find it. Uh, I think it was called Bowden X Carriage Mount for E3D V6. Let's see if I, let's see if I can find it on Thingiverse. I had, did have to do quite a lot of work to it to make it like that. It was originally quite a bit different, but, and I didn't like exactly how it was. But let's see if we can find it on Thingiverse. I probably can't because you know once you find these things once they're impossible to find again. Uh, just, let's try E3D V6. Is there a downloads history? There's probably not, is there? My browser should have a downloads history. Let's see if my browser can find it. Welcome back, everyone that's made it back after my disastrous crash. Entire thing just blue screened, which is why it ended so abruptly. Let's see if I can find this. Yeah, it was Bowden X Carriage Mount E3 V6. That's what it was called, so let's see if we can actually find it. These things, once you... This is the one thing I don't like about Thingiverse. Finding something, just coming across things is nice, but the problem is you find it once, and unless you save the exact location, you just never find it again. Well, that's what I seem to find. Maybe I'm just rubbish at searching things. I can't find any of it now. Okay, well, let's forget about that. Yes, the one that I have, that's, you can take a look at it. I've actually got it in a little CAD assembly here. It is streaming, right? <laughs> it is working. Please say it's working. It is. Is the audio, can you hear me? If you can hear me, someone please leave a comment just to say, yes, you can hear me and it is in fact working. If I don't see anyone, please say it's fine. Hopefully it is. Anyway, back to this. Here, yeah, so you can see this is very similar to the actual X carriage, which I have. I can pick out. No, that's not it. Oh, here we go. So this is the actual Prusa i3 Mark II S. Is it the S? Yes, this is the S version. So you can see how similar it is. I've cut this bit off the top. I'm not actually sure what it was for in the original version, but I don't need it on mine. Uh, this mount for the cables to go through, I put mine offset because I mean, it's a bit, I don't understand quite why it was not offset in the original one because your 
it's designed so that the block that comes out, the cables that come out the bottom of the block can be sort of stashed somewhere. And they naturally come out one side. So I don't know why you put it directly in the middle. That seems really odd to me. But that is what it is. But yeah, that's designed to be fairly close to the original version. Just because I wanted something that I knew would work. And so, yes, that's what I've got. Something that I can be sure will work. And then in front of that, you can see, I mean, this was the imported geometry and these are all the changes I've made. So if we go have a look at that. Just to note again, this was not my full design. I imported that, which, I mean, while functionally it's pretty much the same, there's a whole load of plastic there that you just don't need. So I pretty much immediately went in and just tried to square off the edges, cut out what I didn't need, cut it down to something that's a reasonable printable size. It's a lot thinner, sleeker, functionally exactly the same. And for me, works pretty darn well. In fact, I really like how it's going. Oh, excellent. Thank you for replying. <laughs> that's good to know that it actually works. My time is not completely wasted talking to myself again. So yes, that's that part, and then the then the front again. That's literally. Let's see the original. I think this is an original one. So this is Prusa Mark Two i3 Mark Two S. It's sort of mirror image to what you can see there, because you can see that side, but it's very similar. It doesn't have the cage. The cage is sort of unnecessary unless you're planning to have a child jab fingers in it but then it's all this in there is the heat sink so and the heat sink should be hot because it's been cooled constantly so that's pretty much what that is that screws on there you get the 50 mil fan on the front which you can probably see top right corner there and that's how that works it's pretty simple really you just take the original design and cut the top off <laughs> pretty easy I probably could have designed the whole thing myself, but I didn't. So <laughs> there you go. Back to Steve. See, this is the foot that I did before. I don't want this. Go away. <laughs> you get the best answers if you talk to yourself. <laughs> You can have a fabulous discussion. It really reduces the amount of arguments you get as well. Well, at least you'd hope so, anyway. Uh, so this foot. Who'd have thought a foot could get so complicated? So yeah, we want a spring on this. Just to reduce the, the vibration from the stuff motors. Uh, let's do... What I'm actually going to do is take, uh, stop that again, go back past the chamfers. The reason, so this is one reason for not doing chamfers while you're doing your drawing. The way SolidWorks works is when you create a point that has a reference to something else. So if I make a sketch here, make a reference point, draw a line here, you see it creates a li that yellow, little yellow mark. That's because it's made a link to that geometry. That sketch you see in the side here now has a reference to that chamfer. So if I wanted to move the chamfer below that feature, I can't do it because that feature requires that chamfer to be there to see that edge. So it's best to put your chamfers on at the end and then you don't have that worry, that problem because you can't move the chamfers. And the last thing you want is to not be able to move things around. Do you ever design something and think, how would I see and see that? To be honest, I've not done a whole lot of, a lot of the design work I do do for my job is all pretty much based around sheet metal work. So my brain doesn't really go directly towards CNC processes. So it's not something I generally think about. 
I mean, if you're a CNC machinist by trade, then obviously you'd probably primarily think about how you would machine that using CNC and then go, it'd be much easier to 3D print it. <laughs> so yeah, because I mostly work in sheet metal, I don't have that same thought, but it did take me quite a little while to move to this sort of design process as opposed to sheet metal, because with sheet metal, you're trying to look for the most efficient way to make something a single piece just by folding. So here it's a little bit different, but one's obviously neither better than the other, it just depends entirely on what you're after. What's the actual size of the linear rails? Uh, which linear rails? The the ones on Steve, the the round bars at the moment are eight mil. But I've had people request larger designs, so if you look on the Steve uh Thingiverse page in the file section, I'm pretty sure there's some for twelve mil bearings. So the twelve mil parts. Ignore this design at the moment. You probably if you've seen the uh Hypercube evolution you'll have seen something similar to this. I was just having a look at testing that on Steve and see how well that worked for me. Probably not something I'm going to be going with. Well, not in the near future anyway. But I just wanted to draw it up and see how it felt. It looks all right, but I think the design I have is a bit more robust, a bit more easy, a bit more simple. Here you're sort of quite strongly relying on the rigidity of that plastic to keep that, keep that in line, which... Hmm. Could be all right. Hopefully it's not a problem me whizzing around like this. I don't know how I'm used to this sort of whizzing around the screen, but do do do. The distance between the x-axis. Distance between the x-axis. Do you mean that distance there? Because that's not standard Prusa geometry, unfortunately. This is... The, I know the standard Prusa separation for that is, I think it's 45 mil in it. I made mine 60 so that I could put my stepper motor between the rails. So if you see in there, this is my stepper motor, my NEMA motor, and that fits right between the rails. And I don't think you'd be able to do that, or at least you'd be hard pressed to do that with a 45 mil separation. It is something I want to look at doing. Take the stepper motor away from that position and reduce that separation. Hopefully that was what you're after. Three D printing to a desktop CNC. Yeah, I mean, I've I've always been interested in interested in being able to make stuff at home. So having a CNC or laser would be quite cool. But at the moment, I'm just not convinced that you have the versatility that you really want. I mean, I have at the moment here a laser cutting shop down the road, so considering most of the time I'm used to sheet metal design that's sort of how I think as I already mentioned so having that close means I can if I want something I can draw it up and get it made rather than having to deal with making it myself and I don't think that the desktop CNC's are really that I mean unless you designed it yourself and you know exactly what you wanted and you can get exactly what you need then I don't think they're going to deliver exactly what you need. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. I have nothing against them. They're pretty cool. I definitely want to have one, but I just don't know if I'd be sort of over the moon with it. Oh, what do we think? Well, at the moment, I'm sure it would break because the, the stress from the printer would cause a high, high stress point there. I don't know if anyone's seen my recent video about design features and when you should use fillets and 
chamfers and when not to. That was one of the major points. So fillets are good to reduce stress. So where you have high stress points, where you've got a high amount of stress coming to a, a sharp edge, that's when it's best to use a fillet because it reduces the stress massively. It, well, it doesn't reduce the overall stress. It reduces the stress peak. Oh, you're building the hype cube. Yeah, the hype cube's 45 because I guess he wanted to keep it exactly the same as the Prusa because that's what he came from and he was modifying his based on that. I mean, I can... Yeah. I'll try and take a look at doing a uh, 10 mil version. Uh, 45 mil separation version. But then I have to redesign the whole X carriage and everything as well, and that's that's a whole lot of effort. And at the moment, I don't have huge amounts of time, unfortunately. What am I doing? See, completely lost my train of thought. Yeah. Get those in there. Let's get them smaller than that. See, the problem now is it doesn't look like it's actually going to help. <laughs> Looks a bit too rigid. Let's try that. Let's get this one at four. What do we reckon? Is that going to actually dampen any vibration? Is it going to be printable? Pfft, barely. It's quite a big bridge, isn't it? I think we'll be fine. See, this, this is why I quite like this feature, because you can just imagine, you don't have to imagine how it 3D prints, you just use this. So there is just overhang, that's fine. There's fine, there's overhang, that's fine, because I set it 45 degrees. There's, I mean, it's a bridge. I mean, bridges are fine. Bridges can do, it's just not that big. It's what, 20 mil? It's fairly big. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. Everything there is just trivial. Yeah, that looks all right. Started following you after that video. Which video? The my one about the X carriage. I think. Well, if it was the X carriage, I think that's the one thing that makes my printer quite unique about the other Core X Y designs available. Because there's the Hypercube, Hypercube Evolution are probably the two most popular. There's my one and a couple of others that are sort of less popular, less well known. And I don't think I've seen the X carriage have that same sort of assembly that I've got. Most of mostly, it's like this big massive plastic wall with a stepper motor stuck on the front of it whereas I sort of took it from a wall and gap so the belts don't go all the way through and is it better I don't know does it make a massive difference I don't know probably I think it's probably worthwhile I mean if you can do it you might as well I don't think it's worse that's for sure can it just be printed on the side of course it can that's a good idea yeah yeah, there. Yeah, that would be. Ah, oh, thank you for saying that. That's actually a really good idea because then, yes, definitely, definitely printed on the side. Yeah, because if you print it like that, obviously the stress is just going to separate the layers. Yeah, that's definitely. So yeah, printing it like that, your layers are then that way. Yes. Yeah, I think we'll take if we take. To be honest, that's fine. Yeah, just print it on the side. That's. Why is it done? Okay, it's just infinitely thin. Yeah, definitely print it on the side. CNC all the parts for Steve. That would be awesome. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Yeah, that would be quite a challenge. I mean, I've not designed them to be CNC, but if you can, that would be pretty cool. I think what would be, this is just turned into Q&A and chatting instead of design. Uh, if you did, if you were to cast them and then see and see like the important faces, that would be probably the most effective possibly. I think if you see and see the whole thing, it would take 
I mean, a lot of machine skill. Let's have a look at some of the... I mean, if you could CNC machine that, I'd be quite impressed. <laughs> this is one of my favourite parts, these XY joiners. Going off on a tangent. Yeah, I think you're going to have... <laughs> if you can CNC that, I'd be impressed. But I, th I think you're going to struggle with that one. I mean, can you cast it? I don't know. I'm not much of an expert on casting, to be honest. But if you could cast that and then machine it to fit, like machining the important faces, that's quite a common method of machining, uh, manufacture. You see it a lot on the cast parts, and then there's like you see a lot of uh, like it's a textured face because it's been cast with sand or something similar, and then you see this perfectly smooth part where it's like a mounting bolt or a mounting face that butts up against. But it's perfectly smooth because it's been CNC machined to get the accuracy because casting is not super precise but it does give you a good grain structure where was I? <laughs> uh, nine people nine peoples hello peoples <laughs> Should I have some background music or something? I don't know. Let me know if you want a bit of background music. Normally I listen, because I do quite a lot of CAD design work at home, just, I mean, if there's anything that tells you I do a lot of CAD design work at home, <laughs> this is it. Uh, but yeah, I normally listen to a bit of music, but obviously with YouTube, I can't just sort of listen to what I want to. Yes, definitely printed that way. In fact, I almost, I'm tempted to just go ahead and stick this on the printer. We'll get that. Let's make it... Let's make it a little bit prettier first. And then we'll... very little bit prettier <laughs> it's just there's not much of a change <laughs> yeah casting at home might be a bit ambitious even doing it outside is probably a bit on the messy side oh yeah and the need to completely melt a material yeah not not the easiest thing to do at home i suppose if you do actually achieve some sort of CNC of these parts, even if it's any of them, I'd be quite happy to see that. I'd love to see CNC parts of Steve. That'd be quite cool. So now I'm just going to go ahead and make, so we're going to print this. Hang on, before I do that, when you're designing things that you're going to 3D print, try and think about which way around you're going to print it as you model it and I didn't I never do because <laughs> I'm an idiot but if you look so if you're looking at the bottom right down here this is the axis and obviously x and y on a 3d printer is the bed z is the height so it's going to print like this which you won't be able to do because oopsie daisy oh, put that back to zero as it gets to here that's not going to work really so Try and think about, I mean, if I'd have done it this way, then it would have been fine. But luckily, there's a tool in SolidWorks called Coordinate System, where you can just add a new coordinate system. So we want to print it that way around. Thank you to whoever suggested I print it that way around. Brilliant idea. So now I've got that coordinate system. Don't need these two chamfers. These can just go. It's still going to take a little while to print. A point three clearance on the wall. That will be bridged. Point three clearance.
I'm not sure what you mean. Clearance on the wall that we've bridged. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I know what you mean. Yes. Yeah, because the bridging will droop slightly. Here. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. In fact... Hmm. I might actually just... Let's go back a bit. It's tempting just to cut this... Should we just cut this all the way down? Let's just do this all the way down. Let's forget the extra. Because, I mean, the way I like to do things is printing more than once. But... Oh, <laughs> the chamfers have moved. Uh, oh, yeah, because I put them on that edge. That was silly. Mm, that looks... Mm. 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 Whatever, that'll do. It gives me an idea because it's not all well and good being able to model things in 3D CAD, but things always feel and look different when you've actually got them in your hands and you're trying to fit them. Because you can't really try and fit stuff on CAD. I mean, you can mate it and put the screws in, but it doesn't give you a real idea of how flexible this really is going to be and things like that. So I just first make something that works and then secondly, improve it. Because <laughs> Functionality is obviously most important. If it doesn't do what it's meant to do, then it's completely useless. But after that, just try and improve it. There's no reason to see and see it. You're only adding weight. Hmm. An element of truth to that. Yeah, I mean, it was after it was designed to be three D printed. So, yeah, I mean. It is fine 3D printed because that was sort of the point. But at the same time, metallic parts are going to be more rigid. And the more weight you add to the printer, the less problems you'll have with vibration. And also the more stiff it will be. So as you're accelerating, you'll get less uh, deviation from your intended path if you have stronger parts. Which should go without saying. I'm not sure the plastic parts are really the limiting factor there as well. I think the length of the 8mm rods are going to be probably the limiting factor. <laughs> Measure once, print twice. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, from that point of view, you could say, yeah, it's a bit lazy to just printed twice when you could just get it right the first time but things are never right first time you're gonna to have to print it twice anyway so you might as well make sure that the first one works anyway so I'm gonna just export Ooh, that was big okay export an XTL so because I added that extra coordinate system I can export according to this specific coordinate system Sorry, I'm not showing this, it's deliberate. Okay. Oh, I haven't set up any screen capture for slicing. Oh, well, it'll only be two minutes. So. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I think I pressed the wrong button. What software is this? This SolidWorks. This one. Oop. This one is SolidWorks. The only reason I have a license is because I use it for work and because sometimes I work from home, I can use the license from home. So, genuine license. If I count the parts I made for my Hevo, I could probably have built 10 machines. <laughs> yeah. You, <laughs> you do not want to see how many parts I 3D printed to make Steve. When you have to print the whole printer three times just to get a functional set of parts. That's what it takes. I went through a whole... I bought this... Uh, for the prototyping, I want to have something that I could make sure I print reliably. Because... 
Oops, it is it. I wanted to make sure I could print something for library, so I had this PLA plus from Rigid Ink that I sort of hoped would be a bit stronger than PLA, and I didn't want PLA sort of warping as I was trying to test print. So, uh, test print as in with Steve, not with the other printer. It was this Cintron actually that printed all the Steve parts. Yeah, I wanted something really reliable for printing with, so that PLA plus is what I got a whole roll of it, and I went through that, the whole roll, and like half a roll of PETG being in prototype parts that unfortunately are all sort of not being used which is a bit sad it's a bit disappointing that I've wasted so much plastic but mm, there's a design I mean unfortunately these things happen uh Sorry, you can't see this. I know you can't. Oh, I won't be long. Just, this is going to take a little while to print, so I hope that's all right. Uh, printer, ABS, Citron. Oh uh, yeah, the because the hypercube evolution loses the threaded inserts, doesn't it? That you have to like use a soldering iron, heat them up, and jab them in. I didn't really like the idea of that, so I went for just because uh, nylock nuts to me are better than the threaded inserts. Threaded inserts are just are like a an easy get around, but when you're three D printing parts and you can set like complex geometry without adding anything to the cost, you might as well just have like the nut traps that I've got on my parts rather than messing around with threaded inserts. It seemed, to, me it, no, to me, it seemed like a logical step, but maybe there was a good reason. Now I'm going to steal Steve's. Oh, by the way, <laughs> a lot of people have actually said this. They thought because my printer's name Steve that my name is Steve. My name's not Steve. <laughs> my name's Adam. If you want to call me Steve, then whatever. You know, it doesn't bother me. But whatever floats your boat. Yeah, the, that little carriage that I've got is quite nice, though. I could upload that one if you... Nappen, if you want that design that I've already got, and you can have it. Right, let's get this on the printer. Just out of interest, what control softwares do you people use? Because I'm, I mean, like Octoprint. Because I've given up with Octoprint. I thought it was actually a bit slow, and you could only use one printer. So I've moved over to Repetier Server, which I think is actually pretty cool. Yeah, I'll export. I'll. Uh, in fact, I might do that now. Well, if I don't want to disrupt you guys, but I might just upload that. What's it to? Uh, upload my pressure design to Thingiverse, and then you guys can have a look and maybe print it while we're while we're sitting here having a chin wag. Let's get this printed up. Unfortunately, now because I'm printing things, I have to close the windows and and everything.
Oh yeah, I need to get direct Wi-Fi. I am not on Patreon, no. Uh, this. While my print is heating up, ready for that ABS print. This is what I've been using for quite a while. This is a rearm, which in theory is pretty good, I thought. It uses the ramps board, and this just replaces the Arduino. It's a 32 bit controller that's supposed to have like pretty much all the same features that the Duet Wi Fi has, apart from it's rubbish. <laughs> the whole thing it just doesn't really work very well. Yeah, it was a bit of a disappointment. Is that printer? We're off. Hopefully that's not really, really loud thing. Oh, I mean, hmm. yeah, I did see someone that did multiple instances of Octoprint on the same device, which is fine. I mean, if you know how to do that, then <laughs> go ahead and do that. But to me, it was like when the Oct the Pi has multiple USB ports, especially the three, it's got four USB ports. So it seems logical that you could do four just off the same instance. But for Octoprint, you seem to you run multiple instances which seemed like a whole lot of effort, whereas Repetir Server, you just plug it in and then just add as many printers as you like. It's probably not as many as you like. There's probably a limit, but it's a pretty low limit. Right. I really hope this works. It'll be embarrassing if I try and do a print and the whole thing just, <laughs> just comes straight off. Uh, it's been in a lot of parts recently. That's the only reason I was happy to show it live because I'm pretty confident that it'll work. <laughs> Fingers crossed. There you go. You can see it in the little window. That's cool. No hurry, 18 hour print on my machine. That, oh, I've still never run prints that long just because I, I still don't want to run them overnight or while I'm out. So I never have an 18 hour period where I can run prints. But the longest one I think I've done is this. It's a power supply thing for the Prusa. It's not the original one, it's a modified one, but that was like five and a half hours, which I could just about do in the evening after work with the late night. If I, I think I'm going to have to get some more reliable power supplies so I know I can trust it without it being a problem. And there goes the print. I upgraded my WAN Hawaii 3 Plus with the Duet Wi-Fi. This is, isn't that like your control board's pretty much the same price as the printer? No, they're not that expensive, are they? They're like... The control board itself is £100, but that because the stepper drivers are all integrated, so it's actually not that bad. The thing that got me with the Duet Wi-Fi is this price of the screen, because I quite like a screen, but I've no real, I don't really want it to be touch screen. I don't need a touch screen. I just want to have a screen, something that I can just see, just to monitor. I mean, you can see there with the printer at the moment, like I'm controlling it entirely from my computer, but if I go to look at the printer, it's nice to have that there as well. So anything cheap would be fine for me. Do it Ethernet with a Delta printer. Oh, I've never gone Delta printer. I haven't got space for any more printers at the moment. Hopefully I will soon. Ultra print here useful with Robo iPhone. Oh, Robo as in the R2 printer thing. Yes, that's... Why is my printer just stopped? Okay, this is carrying on. Hang on, what's going on? And we're off. Let's just check that this is going to...
It's actually the worst looking first layer I've had in a while. So hopefully it'll be all right. It also looks a bit out of focus as well. Yeah, it'll be all right. I hope. <laughs> Both my heavy. That's a lot of money <laughs> to it. Yeah, I should really get. I should really have at least one. The thing I like about ramps boys is like. I mean, I don't really like them. I shouldn't like them. They're cheap and they're. Like the original design is not bad and it's quite old now, but. The fact that you can buy like three and then you know that if anything breaks, you can just put another one in. But yeah, it would be better to have a, a good board that just works. I, I do agree with that. What doesn't work? Well, at the moment, the whole thing. <laughs> so, it, it has some weird problem with specific SD cards. Like, if you... It's just really specific about SD cards. Even the one they ship, they're like, well, it might not work. If you format it slightly wrong... If you format it wrong, like, then obviously it's not going to work. But, say, like, if you're... Even if you finish doing it, if you, unless you use the eject from PC button, whatever it is, then it'll just not launch. Well, I've used two different micro SD cards and it doesn't work with either. It just won't launch at all, can't do anything. It turns on and there's a little power light and that's it. It just does nothing. Don't really know why. So I'm pretty sure it's not the config file because... I actually don't know. I mean, I've contacted support and they just don't reply. <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to get support if no one, no one replies. I've contacted them by email, directly by email. So, to be honest, at this point, I kind of just want my money back. Because from day one, it's never really worked. It took me ages just to... I don't want to rant about it. This I do quite like, though. These stepper drivers that, that come with the... Uh, the rearm are, are pretty good. They're... 128th micro stepping, I think. So it's really good smooth movement. And this ramps board, look what happened to that. Can you see that? Let's get that bigger so you can see it. That thermal copper pin, uh, thermistor pin, right at the end. <laughs> Completely bent over. I have no idea how that happened. Because this, uh, the, the whole idea of this was, uh, I could just maximize that. Now you can. There we go. This is so. This is what we printed. I print things really dense at the moment, just because it's a setting that I know works and works well, and I use it for all my Prusa parts. So, uh, what's the time estimation on that? You guys can probably see that better than I can. An hour. Looks like we've got an hour then. <laughs> an hour and a minute to go. Get on Patreon, spotting way too many non -cute. The thing about Patreon is as soon as people want to pay me for something that I won't necessarily do, I just feel a bit... I don't know, it doesn't feel right. I like if I... I don't mind selling people things because I quite like selling things. I've got some things coming up that I might be selling. So if there's a product that I can sell and you, I can guarantee that you'll get what you paid for, then that's fine. I just, if people just give me money for doing stuff on YouTube occasionally, it just, yeah. Maybe if I mean if there's loads of people that are happy to do it, then I probably have thought then maybe what I'm doing is worth paying for. But I have fire alarm that cuts the power of the smoke. That's quite an extreme fire alarm. What if it goes off by accident? <laughs> <laughs> just the whole house <laughs> gone no presumably it's presumably you've wired it up separately so that when it goes off it just cuts the power to the printer rather than the whole house <laughs> the whole street goes <laughs> citywide power outage due to 3d printer smoke yeah 200 us for the pr do it wi-fi and do it touch 4.3 200 that seems really cheap that's a pretty good deal, because they're like a hundred quid, and the bloody the seven-inch touchscreen is like seventy pounds. I just want, I, I, it's expensive. 
I'll get one eventually when I've just gone through every other control board and go, this is rubbish, this is rubbish, this is smoothie wear. This smoothie wear stuff on here. When you're like free controlling it, it does it just ignores it and stops completely. Like how is that a good idea? Anyway, <laughs> this is, just seems completely kind of so I'm just fiddling with uh I'm just because I've, I've been bottling some trapezoidal nuts for a Prusa thing that I'm doing. I haven't got one to work yet. If anyone has a printer that can do that can print a TR eight by eight for four star two millimeter pitch nuts, then I'd be happy to hear from you because that's what I'm trying to print. It hasn't worked particularly well. Quiet and quick. Oh, yeah, the printer. It is a little bit. It is a little far away. It's really not. It's not that quiet. It's probably just because you can see the power supply in the background. That's one of those big, massive, 360 watt things with a huge fan in it. It's not that quiet. <laughs> but you are a little far, a little far away. Might be the size of your SD card. Oh, on here. I mean, I don't think it is because I. This is two gigabyte one. It, they said something small is better. I'm pretty sure it says that in the support documents. And I had I used an eight gigabyte one as well, which would be too big, but it works. I've had it running on two gigabyte SD card for like, well, I bought it and then it didn't work for two months. I had it working for a month on this SD card, and then didn't use it for a while because the heated bed on Steve just no longer safe. So I had to get a new one of those. That's still coming. That's been coming for about eight weeks. That's from Filler Farm. Not particularly happy with them. No. Not done yet. Might be the SD card, but mm, don't know. All the Marlin 32-bit dev use Rearm. There is certainly much anguish with regards to the SD cards. All the Marlin 30-bit to 32-bit devs use Rearm. Yeah, so there's lots of SD card problems. Yeah. Ah, uh, Nappen. Why print them when they cost two bucks from China? Ah, but they don't. See, well... I don't want to reveal too much about the project because uh, it won't be that major. But the one thing I'd say is try and find the exact Delrin nuts that are used on the Prusa i3 Mark II. Exact, not similar. Exact, using the exact same STLs for the 3D printed parts. Try and find them. Can't be done. Can't be done. Can't be done. But I think I found a better solution anyway. Exact same geometry, better material. I think it's going to be cool. How are we doing for print time? Still miles away. <laughs> it's a shame it's a little bit blurry. It would be nice if it was a bit clearer, wouldn't it? Hopefully it's not we're just going to cut this video out. I can't. <laughs> There's no focus settings for this. Follow my. No, I don't want to follow my face. Oop. 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 Sorry. Probably making you dizzy now. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be. Yeah, there's no focus settings for this camera. Oh, has it stopped? Nope, that's fine. The heat bed's no longer safe. Well, okay. So, this is a bit of a, perhaps a weird electronics issue that I'm, I'm not all that hot on technical electronics. So, 
basically, if I was touching, if the heater was on, the heat bed was on, and I was touching the bed, and my arm touched part of the frame, I'd get a little electric shock from the bed. So, basically, it would seem like the mains running through the bed were somehow coupling with the bed and giving me an electric shock. So, I mean, it seems weird because having removed it completely, there's no obvious metallic parts coming through the rubber, the bed. But I can guarantee that I was getting electric shock through that bed. And it wasn't coming from anywhere else because I completely isolated it. So, Filler Farm accepted that they've had exactly the same issue before. They thought they'd solved it before they sent it out. But it would appear not. So they're going to be making me another one, and we'll see how that goes. At the moment, I've got a bed from Kinovo, which actually seems as good, if not better, than the one from Philophon. Which seems odd that a Chinese, I think they're Chinese or Korean company, that you'd sort of expect to be slightly dodgy and a bit funny, actually seem way better than they have. They also have this, what they call the thermostat, instead of a thermal fuse. So the Philophon has a thermal fuse, which means if you go over a certain temperature, the fuse blows. But then if you want to keep using it, then you have to replace the fuse. Well, you can't replace the fuse, so you have to replace the entire heater. So from a business point of view for Philophile, that probably works quite well. But the Kinevo, Kinovo, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it. They have, I need to talk a bit quieter because my voice is starting to go already. Yeah, the Kinovo ones have a thermal, uh, what they call it, a thermostat. So if it goes above a thermostat, if it goes above a set temperature, it just turns off, which is fine, which is exactly what you want. But then when it goes down to a certain temperature, it comes back again. So it just goes, you could almost, well, you probably wouldn't really want to rely on that for your actual heat functionality, but that seems like a way better idea than having the, to replace the whole bed every time it goes over the temperature. I mean, it should never really go over the temperature, but if it does go over, you don't want to say, well, that's the whole heat bed scrapped. So, yeah, the Kinovo one's looking pretty good at the moment. I haven't used it a whole lot, so this is my Steve printer is just sort of sitting there waiting to have a, a proper control board and stuff all sorted out. I've got a bit of work to do on it, but it'll be coming back. Oh, so many questions. It takes me so... <laughs> it takes me 10 minutes to answer a single question. Uh... Order them from Prusa. Oh, I can't order them from Prusa because I've never ordered an i3 Mark II or any of their printers. Excuse me. And they'll only sell to people who have bought one of their printers. I've even, excuse me. I even specifically asked them if I can buy the U bolts and the Delrin nuts, and they were just like, nope, nope, you can't have them. What? What, what sort of shop doesn't sell things to customers? Like, no, you can't have one. You have to buy a printer if you want to buy one of these. So, yeah. We're going to be uh, finding them elsewhere. To be honest, the whole project is a little bit silly because I could sort of do the project just by buying a printer. But uh, talk about that another time. Brass, are they going to be? No, they're not going to be brass. No, way cooler than brass. Brass is so industrial revolution. Or Braz. <laughs> yeah, not going to be that. Are you using SolidWorks? Yes. Yes, I use SolidWorks for my 3D CAD. I have the license that I use from where I work. And since I sometimes work from home, I can use the license from home. So that's what I use. That's what I know. In fact, it's the only software pretty much I know for 3D CAD. I would get into Fusion 360. So if I left where I worked and could no longer access the license, ended up working somewhere without a license, then I would use Fusion 360. But I quite like the fact that SolidWorks, I can save my files locally, which you don't seem to be able to do with Fusion 360. And their whole way with parts being assemblies, being models all made in one model just seems a little bit... I like to have that zero, zero point reference be clear and obvious for each model and it gets a bit confused in my head. So I would use Fusion 360. I have nothing against it, but at the moment, while I've got SolidWorks, I'm definitely going to stick with that. Sounds like a grounding issue. Yeah, it probably is a grounding issue. And you get shocks from your bed all the time. <laughs> Plus one for safety there. Yeah, it is a grounding issue probably. But 
I, I mean, while I'm not electrical engineer, I do know a fair bit about electronics and I did dig around with a multimeter using the, uh, you know, the BP BP setting. I was trying to find what's connected, what isn't, and everything seemed fine. Power supply is grounded, frames grounded. I mean, the problem is the bed can't be grounded because it has to move, but I've changed that on my... So, the 6mm aluminium bed for the Prusa, no, Prusa, for Steve, has four mounting holes. At the moment, I'm using three, which is fine, really, for mounting a bed, because you only need three points to set a plane. And the fourth one, I've just literally a ground wire between the power supply ground and the bed so that if I do get the same failure again it will just go straight to ground and not be a problem hopefully that'll be fine maybe the problem would have been solved before just by grounding the bed I don't really know but surely I mean that would just would have drawn all the current and blown the fuse I don't know it's a shame that I had to send it back Patreon lets us tip those that we like to watch. There's no negative side. Yeah, I suppose so. You could do a super chat thing if you want a super chat. I have enabled that, which seems a little bit silly. Super chat's just about as silly as Patreon. But I mean, if, you, if you're happy to do it, that's fine. I just, I haven't set up Patreon yet. You got a short lemon screw that might have worn out the, ins the insulation on the heater. Yeah, it did sound like I had a short, but I mean, I couldn't get a massive shock. It was only very, very tiny. It wasn't a proper, like, mains kill yourself shock. So that was a bit odd. But let me screw didn't want out the insulation because I have, like you can see on this Prusa printer, in fact, you see where the PEI has a chamfer on the corner so that it's far away from the screw. That's exactly the same as I have on the heater for Steve, which is obviously the underside, not the top, but same sort of shape. So the the springs and stuff that contact the bed are nowhere near the heater. Because, yeah, I didn't want to be crushing the heater in that tension. Because those springs on Steve set the bed. Flipping thick. Don't want to be crushing anything between those. Capacitive coupling. Yeah, maybe it's... Yeah, maybe it just worked like a massive capacitor. I don't know. If I mean, if you're saying that's how... Should only really give you a shock if it's... An AC bed. It was an AC bed. It was alternating current. If it's mains power heater or DC off the power supply. Yeah, it was AC. So the way the Steve power supply, uh, the Steve bed is wired up is through an SSR. So, you know, DC control, the SSR. SSR turns on and off, which does the heat bed from the mains. So, yeah, maybe that's what it is. Capacitive coupling. Maybe I'll just get some more sticky tape and put the bed back on. Now I've sort of torn the to get because I've got this thick aluminium plate on Steve. Well, you can't probably see the plate completely clearly. It has this big thick six mil plate. So to get the heater off, I mean it's stuck on with this E three D adhesive which sticks pretty well. How's the printer doing? It's going to be a long print. <laughs> a solid hour. Yeah, so... To get it off, I literally was like... Tearing, rolling up this heater. So, it's probably not particularly safe to use it again. I have got another one coming. It's just been eight weeks already. And still not arrived. So, but I will definitely ground my beds from now on. For anyone that knows, does this ground wire need to be like... Super massive thick? Or will something thin do? Am I just getting rid of that capacitance... Or whatever it's called capacitive coupling by grounding it do i negate any it can it just be a thin wire or does it need to be a proper thick grounding wire if you know that would be tremendously helpful you can save your files locally in dot f3d files i didn't know that is that like the whole project if i yeah is that so is an f3d file a single part file for Fusion 360 or is it like the whole project that you can only save out at certain times yes a tingling that is exactly what it was 
<laughs> Did I, was my bread not... My bed wasn't broken this whole time. It is a magic... Magic electronics voodoo capacitive coupler. Yeah, a tingling sensation is exactly what was... Because it felt like a sort of sharp edge going down my arm. I was like, there's nothing sharp there. What the hell was that? So I did it again. I was like, that's definitely not right. Yes, they are. Is that... Sorry, Nappen. The, the, the delay makes it really confusing for me when I go top and bottom. Presumably your... Your answer yes was the fact that that's a single part file for Fusion 360. Yeah, I'll probably, I might take a look at how you can do that then. Because I mean, for this, I know that, oh, every project. Yeah, complete project file. Yeah, the, the problem with having a complete project file is it's the whole lot. The thing I like with SolidWorks is I can save those individual part files and I don't know, maybe I don't need to worry about it that much. This is the last thing I want is losing files. I don't want them to automatically save to the cloud. I want them automatically to me. And then I'll put them on Dropbox, save them Dropbox. Then I add that cloud and this and my server and then it's a little, a little bit better. Long print one hour. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's long for the size. It's, I did Well, I did say long print. I What I tried to imply is for the size of the print, which is pretty tiny, it's a long, it's an hour is a lot of time for this tiny little thing. Have you ever used rigid ink? I use rigid ink a lot. And I must say, I, I've i never used Chinese filament. From day one, I was like, I'm not gonna mess around with cheap filament because it'll probably be rubbish. But I've had quite a few issues with rigid ink as well. But their support is also quite good. So one problem I had recently, was with this orange ABS. I was printing it, you know, as you do. That's sort of the sort of the purpose of the filament. And it was sort of bubbling, popping, you know, when you have water in it, vapor. So I was I contacted them and was like, I've only just opened this filament and it's popping. There's got to be water in it. This moisture must have come from your factory because I've only just opened it. Before that, it was vacuum sealed. And then they said, okay, well, we can refund it, but you have to send us that one back first. So I was like, I don't want to do that. So I just bought a new one and then I'll send that back. So I didn't have to waste time not being able to print stuff. Sent it back. No, sorry, didn't send it back. Bought the new one. New one was delivered. Started printing with the new one. Exactly the same problem. And they were like, well, it's probably not our filament then. So it's like, well, maybe they're both wrong. But they said, try lowering your temperature. So I was printing ABS at 240 to 245. And so for cheap Chinese filament, cheap Chinese filament, I think that's pretty normal. I saw a fairly high temperature. But for this rigid ink PLA, if you print it at like 230, 225, 230, no problem at all. And it's still, I mean, it bonds really well. But presumably that you don't need as high... It's mean they say it's optimized to print at lower temperatures. Hopefully that doesn't mean they've mixed it with PLA or something, because I'm after ABS. That's why I bought ABS. But it, I mean it does print well at lower temperatures. So maybe maybe try printing at lower temperatures. Yeah, I've not used Chinese filament, so can't really compare to that. Should be thick if it's a real sure ever develops your. Uh, you don't want to be grinding your wire to vaporize before the vape breaking convert. Yeah, absolutely true. In case you get an actual short, but a thinner wire should get minimized the tingle when you get the capacitance. Okay, yeah, so to get rid of the capacitance, the capacitive coupling, is it would it be the capacitance that you're getting rid of? You connect any sort of wire, any sort of wire would be fine. But for if you want if you want to use it for grounding in the case of damage, then a proper wire. Yeah. Totally makes sense. Yeah, I'll probably try and I mean, what I tend to do is have these like kettle leads, cut the plugs off the end and use the wires out of those. <laughs> Hopefully that's all right. <laughs> I mean, there, obviously ground, there's a ground wire in there, so I normally use the ground wire from that. <laughs> if it was an actual short, it would be more than a tingle. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be like a full body tingle. 
Yeah. With death, with death included. Well, potentially. Right click, export F3D. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose, I mean, the thing that did worry me most about Fusion 360 is not having any of the files. So if they decide, well, we don't want you to have files anymore, then they're all gone. So, I mean, what I'll probably try and do is, I don't know, can you set up macros in all Fusion 360? Because I'd quite like it to export like a step file and the project file every hour or something that I'm working. So at the worst, it comes to the worst, I still have a step file I can import into other software. Well, that would be quite good, I think. Yeah, probably capacitive coupling. Yeah, totally agree. <laughs> yeah, so the rigid ink is the rigid ink orange was ABS that I was printing at two thirty. I was printing two forty, and they told me two thirty. ABS two hundred five to two twenty five. Looks like I should be printing my ABS a little bit cooler. Can't seem to get it to stick to the bed properly. Tried all sorts apart from tape on the bed, which I desperately want to avoid. The thing that I would recommend that I have had most success with for sticking is PEI. PEI plus auto level seems to be just instant win. I've had this PEI installed for three weeks, probably. Can you see this pile of parts down here there all of this massive pile of orange in all of those parts I've not had one failure the only failure I had was because I accidentally unplugged the printer while it was printing turns out <laughs> that stops the print so auto level get your auto level just right so that first layer comes right every time PI sticks brilliantly if I was you, i try and do that. I mean, the thing I don't like about it is you can't take it off. So with glass I used to use all the time, you could take that off so you could put it on your desk while you hack at it so you're not pushing at your printer. But really, if you want it to stick, PI for me has worked really well. Oh, have I been? <laughs> First it was ABS, then it was PLA, and now it's ABS again. Under pressure, can't get me words straight. This, ABS. Problem was with ABS. Yep, not printed PLA for a long time. Functional parts just tend to not go quite so well with PLA for me. They're good for reliability of, of printing, that is. Whew. Have we got any more questions? If not, I shall address a new topic. This is my first ever stream, by the way. So if it's if it looks a little bit rubbish, and I'm not very good at it, then that's probably why. <laughs> I just like I need to do some streaming. I think it's a good idea. It'll probably be good. I mean, I what I'd basically be doing now is exactly this anyway: modeling stuff and printing things. So it's quite nice to do it with you guys as well. Glue the PEI to the glass plate. What you mean with like the print stick glue that you use to stick down prints? I guess you could, I suppose. To make it removable. Mm. I like the absolute consistency you have with properly 3Ming it down. Like that 3M tape is not coming off. I know because I tried to remove it from something else. Oh yes, let's do that. Let's look. Let's yes. Let me upload the things so you can see the things. 
Yeah, so for anyone that wasn't here earlier, uh, we were having a quick look at the uh, the carriage that you can see on the printer printing at the moment. And my computer's not crashed. I blue screened like after five minutes of streaming before and now it's fine. Anyway. Create highlight. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, sorry, where were we? Yes, open recent. Uh, sort of looks. And you can still see the thing. Yes, you can still see up there, up there, just up there. You can still see the printing. Uh, so yeah, we're looking at this, which is what you can see on there at about whatever that angle, which is a Prusa style Bowden, pretty much. So if you imagine the Prusa i3 Mark II, cut the stepper motor off the top, the stepper motor extruder parts, you pretty much get left with this. I should stress again, it wasn't my original design. I got the files and modified them, and I'm really sorry, but I cannot remember. Well, I tried to find it on Thingiverse where I got them from, and I couldn't find it. But if you search, yeah, I mean, you're looking for something that his original file looked like that and was something along the lines of uh, E3D V6 Bowden Prusa or something like that so I just made a bunch of modifications to get this instead because I think this is much better uses less plastic uses less plastics PI on glass on that. Yeah, I could do that. But I, because I'm using auto level, I can't really use glass. It doesn't really work. Sticky stuff remover. I ended up using, I tried acetone to begin with and that was pretty much useless. Yeah, isopropyl alcohol seemed to be the, the best thing to remove three M adhesives. Uh, apparently it's the chemically correct thing to use. I don't know. Is that my design? Jack, I, <laughs> I hope it's yours. I hope it's not yours. I'm so sorry. I don't know. If you have the link to your... Jack, if you want to share the link to Thingiverse, if it was your, if it was your design, I can, I'm happy to share it. I just I tried looking for it earlier and I couldn't find it anywhere. Can never find things more than once on Thingiverse. You find them once and that's it. That's the first that's the first and only time you'll ever see them. BL Touch does, yeah. I don't I don't know. BL Touch plus glass plus PEI. My voice is just dying. It's dying a horrible slow death. Is it alright if I whisper because my voice is going? <laughs> Jelly baby. Helps soothe the throat. Not used to talking this much. Sticky stuff removes citrus oil based. <laughs> yeah, so the uh, the oils that you get in the skin of an orange that are flammable, presumably it's made of those. <laughs> Shall I make this a little bit larger? I feel like I should make this a little bit larger. Yes, yes, lovely. <laughs> Terps from an orange, yeah, pretty much turpentine. <laughs> when you whisper, you sound like a British pervert. 
No, I won't do it again. <laughs> Stop it. Rob, could you put a link to that so we can have a look? Can you link stuff in YouTube chat? I'm sure you can. Or do I have to approve it? Either way, if I ask you, surely that's allowed. Uh, all right, sorry, I'm just going to have to send you back over there. post a link is that a setting that I've got on yeah Is there a way that I can let you guys post links? Because it would sort of seem like common sense. Yes, do what Trace says. Good idea. I struggle to think while I'm streaming, apparently. It just becomes completely impossible. This the thing that I was after. Mine didn't find that thing number. thing number didn't seem to work for me twelve people now Woo. it's going better than I expected apart from you know the massive blue screens at the start which were a problem Oh no, that's not. No, Jack, that's not yours. Yours looks good though. It looks like it's the same sort of. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, hang on. Yeah, that does look like it now, actually. I think, <laughs> I think that is. Hello, Solidus. Yeah, Jack, I think that's your design, mate. Burn an ex-carriage mount for That is, in fact, it. Oh, 
It looks like you've changed it since I downloaded it. Yeah, so you added the Mark II S mount. There you go, I don't need to upload it now. Well, I suppose there's... Hmm. Yeah, Jack, I like the, because uh, the, the Mark II S doesn't it, has a clamp instead of the nut based adjustment for the sensor. But that seems to be what's in some of your earlier images. <clears throat> Still got the BL touch. Yeah, the thing that I, well, I do like your design, obviously. It's pretty good. That's why I downloaded it. But that, uh, that main plate, this, uh, let's show you. So this part, so yours is originally like that isn't it that's how it started so i just thought i don't want to print all that plastic that i'm not actually gonna i mean there's no functional benefit you've added that extra part at the top now to hold the tube so that's obviously makes it a bit more useful i just cut it down so it's doesn't use as much plastic prints a bit quicker and still functionally the same Ooh. Improve the fan duct. Let's see your changes on the fan duct. What did you change about the fan duct? The square. See, the, the the only slight problem I'm having with uh, with mine is the fan duct seems to have. You can probably see it actually on my. Oops, on my print. <coughs> You can see how the uh, where the fan duct is is sort of gone a little bit. It's bent a little bit. I think they it's just a bit close to the heat block, or I didn't have the heat block quite right, and it's just warped it inwards a little bit, which is probably my fault. Yeah, let's have a look at this and or not. Seems it's a funny name for a website. Twelve inch square, point eight thick. Yeah, that seems to be the same sort of stuff that they sell in a lot of places, actually. Twelve inches, three hundred mil. That should be quite good for me. I might get one of those and cut it down. Twelve inch square, point eight thick. PI bed. Presumably, the build plate is the PI. The build plate is the PEI with the adhesive. Not branded as other build plates to keep the cost down for end users. If you buy custom graphics, please contact. Yeah, it does look like PEI, doesn't it? I'm tempted to get one though for 15 quid. It's pretty good. Yeah, I'm a design engineer, Trace.
Yeah, I think that problem. Yeah, uh, Jack. Yeah, the. Uh, I think that problem that I'm having is probably my fault. When I mounted the block, I didn't keep it uh, rotated right away from the plastic. It was touching it, so it's, the heat's gone to it. Good to see. If you reduce that plastic, reduce the plastic usage. Yes, love to see that. That'd be cool. Is uh, is Na if Nappen's still here? Nappen, make sure you check that because I'm not going to print uh, upload mine. There's no point because Jack's is the design that Jack's talking about is the is the one that where I got mine from. And if he's going to do uh, reduce their p uh, plastic usage in his design, it seems a bit of a waste of time me uploading mine. Jack, what was what did you have for your rear X carriage? Because I I changed that a lot. I modelled, I almost I mean you can see from the well you can't see the feature tree. Yeah, check my feature tree out. Look at that feature tree. So yours was yeah. So that's yeah. You had uh, the four the four uh, animate you use. Yeah, I went. I sort of took your design and thought that looks a lot like the original Prusa so I went even more like the original Prusa yeah I suppose this one this X carriage part is more unique to mine but these ones definitely definitely yours that's just the PI their own surface is slightly different and 0.5 mil thick I think this one it calls itself the 12 inch and or not build plate. I'm pretty sure that is the one. I'll just, there you go. This is the one I'm looking at. Bum, ba, ba, bum, ba, 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 ba. Here. I've not actually, how have I not found this place before? This seems like a pretty good shop. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, I can just sit here for hours looking at this, <laughs> browsing 3D printer shops. A quick overview of what you do as a design engineer. Sure, so without being trying to be too specific for my actual job, the des a design engineer role in my experience is basically your lead engineer will take the specific uh, requirements of a customer or for a product and then they'll assign tasks for each engineer to come up with a way to solve each problem which will then involve designing the parts to solve the problem some parts you'll be able to do just in CAD and then get them manufactured some parts you'll have to buy like off the shelf products so you might have to contact suppliers or you might have to try and get bespoke parts made so like bespoke parts but modified off the shelf components if you like or modify original parts I mean there's a lot that a design engineer could be expected to do but you might be working with reference geometry it depends sort of how your company operates I think because some work more on the design basis some work more on the engineering but on the engineering side it depends how fast your company goes how much analysis you'll do within your design there's quite a lot of different variations, but a design engineer role could be quite varied. Twenty percent discount code for the bill plates. Yes, please. I might have to pick up one of those later. Thank you all. <laughs> Spending my goddamn monies. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. Oh, I must have been on the chair. <laughs> okay. This little knife is basically what I remove every print with 
I cut all the flashing, all the extra material off with this. I modify the little parts. I use it for literally everything. It's the, the perfect tool for 3D printing, although it's technically not. I use it for everything. And I lost it. I was so gutted. I couldn't find it. I was looking around the house for hours trying to find where I put this little knife. It's like the perfect little knife for 3D printing. It's really not, but it is for me. <laughs> so whatever. And I lost it and I was so gutted. I even bought another one in the end because I, I need to have a little knife for doing these things. And now I found it. It just fell randomly out of my chair. I don't know why or how, but it, it's there. So I've got it now. Happy days. Are you allowed to show knives on a stream? I hope so. That'd be gutting. It's only a tiny... Um, it's a tool. It's definitely a tool. It's not a knife. It's a tool, which is fine, I'm sure. Why don't you just use double length LMAT you use? I mean, you could, yeah, an LMAT LUU. So as far as I know... Let me hang on a minute. Sorry if I'm starting to look a little warm. My ABS printing does tend to heat up the room somewhat. So these are Elimate L-U-U and Elimate U-U. So Trace is saying, why use two of these here instead of using one of these? Well, if you look down, you're probably not going to be able to see this on the stream. You can see there's four lines of bearings so throughout the round thing there's four locations of bearings top left bottom right and they're obviously what contact the rail in here you have exactly the same four but if you take four and four and offset them by 45 degrees you then have eight contact points sort of you see so instead of just having four top left bottom right you then have them diagonals as well so that is the advantage of using two bearings in terms of alignment i've not i mean if anything you don't want them to be perfectly aligned because these sorts of bearings are not designed to be run extremely straight because if you have a slight offset on them i mean very slight i don't mean big very very slight it's actually quite useful i found it might not be technically true but I found it actually works quite well. It helps. It stops any loose movement because I mean these are not these are not precision bearings. These are cheap Chinese bearings that that work and only for a second. So because they're not super precise, it helps to have a little bit of offset. And those eight contact points do end up with a uh, a slightly better movement. I started with the Prusa rework carriage, but I may mod my own carriage to be like the original Prusa one, as I like the cables coming out the back instead. Yeah, the cables coming out the back actually is really, really, really useful. You can see, so, yeah, I don't have the block on this that you can, but if you imagine the block sitting in there, and the cables just coming out the back of the heater and out the back here, and then they come, so they come out the back here, up to here and then you have a big three mil bit of nylon that sticks out the back here or you go the mark 2s route with a screw and a little extra thing but yeah i mean it just helps google those wires nicely you have little zip tie holes through here for holding that down works pretty well i think it's worked pretty well for me i'm sorry to the person that says i love your channel but i don't know how to pronounce your name But I'm glad you like it. Jackson, best place to buy PEI in the UK? That's a really good question. And you know what? I've just been given the answer about five minutes ago. 
if you go to and or not .co.uk, it seems like their bed is PEI or looks like PEI. Because I've not really found a good place to pee for PEI, if I'm really honest. I want to try and get a good place for PEI. If not, I will buy the PEI myself. <laughs> so that's what I mean about selling things. I mentioned a while ago in the stream, probably an hour ago, about not wanting to use Patreon because I'd much rather actually sell something specific. Well, PEI might be one of those things. If I can find somewhere that will supply PEI bonded and it's something a lot of people want, then I might buy a bunch so I can sell it. Because at the moment, I can't find any decent place in the UK for buying PEI, especially with this stuff already attached and a decent thickness for 3D printing. Because I contacted some suppliers and they were like, oh no, the minimum thickness we do is like 5 millimeters. Like, That's no good, is it? Can't, can't 3D print on that? Well, you probably can, but it would be so expensive and just not necessary. So, for yeah, for 300 by 300, I haven't got anywhere decent. 200 by 300, you can get from Prusa. It's like the only thing that they sell. If you haven't bought one of their stuff. Thank you very much for coming, Trace. <laughs> 3.15am, thank you for staying up. I really appreciate it. Thanks for thanks for dropping by. Hopefully I'll be doing another stream because I think it's gone quite well. Hopefully I'll see you again soon. So yeah, Jack, if you want to buy PEI, you can go to Prusa for 200 by 300 but this and or not .co.uk, as in and, as in this and this, or this or this. It was, if you scroll up the comments, you might see it. But they seem to have a new build plate that would appear to be PEI. It certainly looks very similar to PEI. Or they have a PEI one as well. That probably looks like a pretty decent place to buy it. I've not found anywhere else. Thirteen people now. I was gonna be like happy if I got two people. If I hang on, let's just do this. Yes, yeah, so I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna upload this model because Jack's gonna be changing his anyway. Or maybe I will. Jack, are you? Do you want me to upload this one and then people? Maybe I'll do it as a remix of yours. That would probably be wise. I shall do it as a remix. Ooh, the prince coming along. Oh! It's working. Of course, I've only got one, and I can't really test it without four, but mm. at least it's a start. 14 people! Yeah, Jack said, and or not, that would be the, looks like a good place to go. Obviously, only found out about it five minutes ago, so <laughs> no experience with them, but first appearances look good. They are remarkably well priced. I mean... I had a look, I mean, just before the stream started, I was looking for PEI, because oh, another disaster story. Let's not go into it. Yeah, I was looking to get some PEI and uh, LF Objects, the Lulzbot guys. They're selling them on uh, on Amazon for 300 by 300. But they're like nearly 50 pounds. 50 quid for a bit of PEI. I mean, if that's where you can get it, that's where you can get it, but... I'm more than happy to try somewhere else if it's only 15 quid. You can buy like several beds and PEIs for like that, that amount. That gives me an idea. Split bed, two, three more pieces of aluminium, one with... <laughs> two, three more bits of aluminium, one with a heater on the bottom, one with the thingy on the, the PEI on the top, switch in the top plate. Bob's your mother's brother. That's a design. That's my one, you can't have that. <laughs> Uh. 
Oh, by the way, Jack, the, uh, I think the other thing I modified on mine was the text on the duct. Because I, I just found it was pretty useful. Useless, sorry. Because, <laughs> I mean, I think most people know that the hot end is hot. And it just makes the print way more difficult than it needs to be. I mean, yours is pretty good. So d d don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking what you were doing. But that's one other thing that I did with mine. Just because I didn't want the unreliable... Any chance of having an unreliable first layer. Oh really? Shipping's quite expensive, I suppose. Yeah, I might buy. How much is the shipping? Presumably you're in the UK. 17 inch plate. Heated beds. Yeah, the hot, the hot, hot text. Yeah, I think it looks really clean without it as well. Yeah, seven pound does seem quite a bit. I bet I mean, fifteen plus seven is still a lot less than forty-five. So it might be more, but it's still less. <laughs> if that makes sense. Oh, 275 for second class. Yeah, that's... Twenty-nine including VAT for 303 IPA. IAA includes 3M material. How is yours coming to 2856? Oh, I'll probably I'll probably end up with 12 inch. I mean even 30 qu um 30 quid starts to get quite a bit actually, doesn't it? But I mean if that's what you can get and that's what's available then it's still less than 50, 47 whatever it is.
How do you upload <laughs> a remix? Here we go. Oh. Three minutes left on the print. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. I'm not sure how much I can test it, but... I'll fix it to a foot and see if we can uh, compress it and see if the spring of it works. Uh, <laughs> Files. Ah, uh, excluding that, yeah, okay. And the PEI rather than the build plate. with tape and with VAT for PEI. I think I paid more than that for PEI when I first bought it. I think that was, that was like £35 from someone on eBay. So, yeah, it's not, PEI is not cheap, it would appear. 0.8 PEI was separate 3M sheet for 25 Yeah, I've, the problem I've had today with the separate sheet is it's not as easy to put on as a, I mean, it's nice to have them both already assembled in its one piece. I found, if you're fine with putting it on, then by all means. But just so you know, I had a bit of a trouble doing that. Personally, I don't know about the proprietary material. Rob, do you know? Do you, Have you used it or did you just find it? Be good to know if anyone's used it. Woo. The print is done.
Right. Just filling in the. Uh... See, look, ultimate 3D printing equipment. Still hot. Comes off like a charm. See, then you can use the knife to sort of scrape around. You scrape backwards with the knife just to stress the material. Fractures at the weak point. Don't know if anyone else does this. Don't know if this is recommended. But I found it works pretty well for me. Just thought you guys that are here now probably didn't even see why I printed this in the first place. So, Steve 3D printer. Wanted to try and add some damping. So this part that looks a little bit like a spring at the bottom might help with that. It's bloody rigid, <laughs> so I don't think I don't think that's going to be doing anything. But it looks quite cool anyway. Yeah, it's definitely not going to be a spring. Blooming hell, it's so rigid. Yeah, I. Super dense infill, not going to be, uh, not going to be springing, but part of the reason for doing this was just so I could have something to stream. And then we got some holes on either side for securing it to the extrusion. So let's get some nuts and things. In lieu of having the actual printer right in front of me, I'm just going to use this. Have I got that right? I'm pretty sure I have. Eighteen sixty with VAT and delivery. I should get sponsorship from Andrew. <laughs> we've like we've had like several purchases within one stream. Okay, so there are com some complexities with actually installing this. It's not the easiest thing in the world to. So this is what I mean by functionality and then ease of use. So maybe a lot of you won't hear at the beginning of the stream to hear that, but basically the way I tend to do some design, some design sometimes is to uh, first make something that works and then improve it. There we go. Now let's tighten it up. Here we go. Let's make this window a little bit bigger so you guys can see. Here we go. So it does two things. One allows you to actually secure it to the post. Sometimes they use threads in the end here, but no one's going to want to have a tap on them. People that have taps can tap the hole. People that don't can't be bothered to buy one. So we'll just do it this way. And 
This was supposed to be a spring to help reduce the damping, but it's way too stiff, so that'll do literally nothing. But it does raise the bed up a bit, so I wanted to have some longer stepper motors, and by by doing this, I can do that. Sorry, I keep looking over there. It looks like I'm talking to someone. Camera's here. Monitor's there. Keep looking over there. Should be looking here. So yeah, that's pretty much what I've ended up with. This is pretty rigid. It's pretty strong. It's not going anywhere. As I said, printed it pretty dense. Pretty happy with that. Doesn't do the springy springy, but it's, it is going to allow me to add some longer stepper motors without too many problems. Right. You guys are just talking about something completely differently now. <laughs> There's a pretty solid discussion about other things. Maybe I should leave the stream running just so you can chat about beds, bed services and postage. <laughs> I'm pretty warm now. I'm pretty exhausted. I think we're going to call that a day. That is going to be the end of the first CRT live stream. With one crash included for your convenience. <sighs> yeah. I don't think there's anything else we need to go through. Unless anybody has some specific questions for me that you want to ask before we go. Then I think we're going to call it a day. I'll leave you a couple of minutes to mull it over. For those that wanted the X carriage, this assembly, I'm going to be putting that up uh, fairly soon. I've already started to write the entry for Thingiverse. I won't bother with like loads of pictures and graphics and stuff because Jack's got plenty on his page. So, yep, that'll be up soon. If you want that, you can take a look at that. Other than that, I think that's pretty much it for today. Does it make low latency is significantly different for you guys I mean this is my first ever stream so <laughs> the chances of me getting things right were pretty slim yeah I suppose it was quite interactive and there was a bit of a delay yeah yeah thanks Mr. Poof I shall take a look at that for next time hopefully there'll be a next time I've quite enjoyed it so I'm pretty sure we'll manage the next time two hours pretty solid but it means there won't be a video today. I mean, I've spent a lot of today setting up for the stream and doing the stream. So, no video for me today. But hopefully this was a good good replacement instead. I've quite enjoyed it. <laughs> More than I thought I would. I thought it would be a bit stressful. I was pretty relaxed. It's really hot in here now. It's like 30 degrees because ABS printer, 100 degree bed, no enclosure. Just heats the entire room. Sorry, keep looking at the wrong place. Oh, and I've learned somewhere where we can buy some new beds and so a couple of you are probably going to be getting those as well right. thank you very much for watching go check out the channel for any more videos about 3D printing content etc thanks very much for watching if I've probably said that already whatever let's just go let's just go now it's 40 seconds low latency is about 15 seconds ultra low is 1 to 2 Good stream. Thank you, Mr. Poof. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everyone. I shall see you in the future.